Hi friends, my name is Beyhan and in this video I will show you how to install SAP NetViewer ABAP Developer Edition. I have tried it for two days and I have failed many times and I learned actually a few lessons. One of them is it will fail at the first time because of sideways license. This information isn't on blogs or neither on videos. So I have tried a few times but I have failed. Actually we have only 25 steps. After that it will be successfully installed. First of all we need to install Ubuntu, we will be installing old version of Ubuntu because new versions are problematic with the SAP installation because of kernel version. We will be downloading old version of Ubuntu from here. I will be sharing this blog post link. Uh, I will be sharing this blog post link under the video so you can get all these links and all the information on this blog post as well. So if you go to the old release Ubuntu, you need to download 18.10. And I have used desktop image, so you can download desktop image as well. And also, we need to download VirtualBox. We will require VirtualBox to run Ubuntu on our host machine. And I have used 6.1.34 on my machine. Some other versions of VirtualBox had some issues on my machine. And we also need to download ABAP Developer Edition installation files. If you click this link, you will go to developersub.com trials download here in the search bar write ABAP and press enter and here we will be downloading this 7.52 sp04 first 11 parts of this archive file is for the sap installation and this one is for the license installation this is the main reason i have failed many times during my installations let's go and click new to create our new virtual box i will write ubuntu and I will be creating this virtual machine under C drive because I have space there and I will click next for the memory I will be sparing like 12 gigabytes of memory and it will be create a virtual hard disk now virtual hard disk dynamically allocated and it will be 120 I will spare some space for it because I have space now I go to settings, go to system, processors, I will increase the core size. Now I will click start. We need to choose our Ubuntu disk image. So you need to click add, go to your download folder and choose like Ubuntu. I have tried a few times, but we will continue to 18.10. So I click choose and start. Ubuntu installation started. Keep the language English. It is important. It needs to be English. Click install Ubuntu. Choose your keyboard layout or click the deck keyboard layout and just press the, any of the keys shown on the screen. Click continue. I will choose minimal installation and I won't be downloading anything during installation. Continue. Install now. Continue. Choose your time zone. Continue. And here you need to give a name. I will be giving name called Zen. And if this your computer's name is very important. So make sure that you give correct name. And as mentioned in the blog post, it should be VHCAL MPLCI, which is this. I need to write it VHCAL and PLCI username is fine and the password is capital C called Zen one I mean this is my password you will see it like that this is my password it needs to be a characters code Zen one continue that's all about the Ubuntu installation, then we will continue with Ubuntu configuration, package updates and required lab library installations. Then we will be copying the RAR files from Windows to Ubuntu by using SFTP and, and, and then we will continue with SAP installation. It will fail at the first time, then we will copy the license files for Sybase and we will start installation again, then it will be working just fine. Okay, installation is completed. Now we need to restart our machine. Press enter to continue. 
enter your password, code then one. We can skip this window. Now we just need to go to terminal screen, open new terminal, and here we want to run update. It will fail, as you can see, because we are running old version of Ubuntu. Now we need to change the apt source list. To do that, we need to run sudo nano atc apt source list, as you can see at the screen here as well. And here we just need to change all these archive words with the old releases. That's it. Now press Ctrl X, press Y and enter. The files changed. Now we can run our update command again. Okay, now we will continue with upgrade command. Press Y and enter. Upgrade is completed. Now we will disable firewall. Done. Now we will be installing OpenSSH to reach this uh, virtual machine with PuTTY client from SSH and uh, to be able to transfer files with SFTP. That has been done too. Now we will go to VirtualBox and we will do port forwarding. This 10.0.2.15 is default IP address of VirtualBox, so it's always the same. Okay, now if I want to continue with PuTTY, PuTTY is a client that you can download from internet direct like that. PuTTY client, you can go to PuTTY org and you can download it from here if you want. Here, what you need to do is you need to create a you need to write IP address 127.0.0.1, which is the local host IP address of Windows. Then I will be trying to connect with port 2222, which is forwarded to Ubuntu 22. So if I double click this one, if you see this screen, that means you could connect to the Ubuntu, except write username code then, write password code then one. Done, we are here, we are in and now we will continue by simply copying and pasting command from here to putty client and uh, we need to install these new libraries sorry we need to go to putty right click it will paste automatically press enter enter the username's password code then one Click Y and enter. Copy the next command, corn shell. Ubuntu requires this. Copy the next one. Right click, paste and enter. Copy next one, 15th. Right click, enter. Copy this one as well. Paste, enter. Yes, enter. Now we need to edit the host file. This is an important step. And here we need to do first line is same. We won't be doing anything for the first time, but for the second time, one space bh call nprci dummy dot domain and press Ctrl X Y and enter. That has been done too. Now we need to reboot. 
Okay, mutual box is ready. I will open Putty again. Double click here. Code Zen. Code Zen 1. Okay, we have done required installations. Now we will continue with copying files from our Windows machine to the Ubuntu. Then we will unwrap them and then we will start installation. First, we need to download FileZilla, which is a SFTP client. So you can download it from here. I have it on my machine. I go here. We need to do configuration on FileZilla. You need to go to Site Manager. Just add a new site here by clicking New Site. Put the local IP address again. Again, the port is the same as we have done SSH connection because SFTB and SSH, they are both working on the same port, which is 22 on Ubuntu. But since we have done port forwarding here on this machine from 22, 22 to 22 of Ubuntu, what I mean is this, from 22, 22, 22, too many twos. Just click connect and the user will be root and the password will be code Zen one Now first we won't be able to connect, it will be denied. That's because of the SSH settings. We need to change SSH settings, which is mentioned here on the post. To pass this error, we need to change permissions on SSHD. First, we will go and change the root password. C capital code Zen one same password as before. Code Zen one Now we will go and edit this file and at the end of this file we will be adding permit log root login yes. Again, you can write it here or you can copy it from here by selecting Ctrl C and right click here by, and you can paste it by right click. Ctrl X, Y, enter. Now we need to restart the service. Now we will try with FileZilla one more time. See, it's connected. And uh, here we need to go to the root slash. Here we want to create a new folder. It will be SAP setup. Okay. Now we can go to this new folder. Just write it here, SAP setup. And go to your downloads folder on your Windows machine, if you are using Windows. And just drag and drop files. So rar files, I don't need readme. Now it's copying all the files. So instead of making sudo make to SAP setup, we simply used FileZilla to create this folder. Then we will continue these commands from this step because we already dragged and dropped files. We will just change the folder and file permissions and then we will continue with the installation. Okay, transfer is finished. Now we don't need FileZilla anymore. We will continue with changing permissions on folder. So we go to putty. If you go to our root folder, and if you list all the folders here, we will see our new folder, which is SAP setup. What I will do is I will change permissions to the CH mod for all items in it. That has been done. Now we will continue with the other steps. It is a good idea to take snapshot of the virtual machine state because if you make a mistake, then they can actually go back to the current state. I, I will put my username password here and uh, some explanation of the snapshot. And I will say ready to Unwrap and install. Okay. Okay, virtual machine is ready again. And we will be using Unwrap to extract files from the archives. So what we will do is we will be installing Unwrap. Now we will go to our installation folder. 
cd slash subsetup and if we list we will have all the rar files here and now we will continue with unrolling the sap installations copy the command paste it okay that has been done now we need to unroll the license file but just to remind you it was here part license we have downloaded all these files 11 files and license file and we have copied them to our uh, virtual box now we need to unroll that one as well just to show you the current state of folder so we have all these extracted files installed at shs here available and we need to unroll the license so same command so it, it will be only the archive file name will be changing that has been done and if you go to the license folder if we list there is a sideways folder so we need to get into this one and here there is a leak file we need to copy this leak file to subset up folder just next to the install.sh so to do that again we can simply copy this command If you are giving the folder names exactly as I mentioned here, you won't have any problem. So I just press this and that has been done. If I go to SAP setup again and list all, as you can see, we have this leak file here. This is the leak file. Yep. Now next step is starting uid server we need to start it so to start it sudo service uuidd start and to check the status of this service you can just write status press ctrl c it won't stop the service it will just close this output and now we are actually ready to start after being root now we are root, as you can see it's written here root. Now we can go to the folder SAP setup. Before running it, we need to change permission of install.sh. Done. Now we can just run it. You can copy it from here. Go to putty, press, done. We got a warning. Let's check it with our etc host file. So here, if you go up, it needs to be like this. Let's check if, if we have exactly the same thing. So we will do sudo nano etc hosts. Yeah, as you can see, this IP address is left wrong. It should be 10, 0, 2, 15. And press Ctrl X, press Y enter now we need to run install the sh again this time everything is fine we will press y to accept the agreement and the password code zen one c is capital code zen one installation is started probably it will take up to 20 minutes then it will fail and we will continue with the license copying after copying license, we will start again, and this time it will be working just fine. Yep, it failed again. Installation failed, and we will check if it is because of Sybase license. To do that, we will go to FileZilla, and we will again log into our server. Double click on this root folder, and go to subsetup. Here, there's a log file. It, drag and drop it to any folder that you want to reach. And here, we will just open it. I will open it with Notepad++. And it says, here's something more detailed about the logs. And it should be somewhere here. Yeah. It says, please find logs under temp sub installation there. So we will go to the temp here. And here, we need to go to sub inst under this folder, under this one. Yeah, there are a few logs and sort by the log type, file type, sorry. And 
try to open this dev log. Open it again. Here, look for error. And make it match case. And uh, as you can see, it is exact same error as mentioned on the blog post. So we go to 25 and 26 again. We just need to run this command to copy this license file to the Sybase license folder. So I go to putty. I am already in sub setup. If you are not, just write cd slash sub setup. You should be still the root and you should be still in sub setup. So that step is not necessary, but if not, just paste the command and press enter. Now again, you need, now again, we need to run install.sh. That's it. Hit enter again, accept license again, give the password. Now we just need to wait and let's see if this time we will have successful installation. That's it. We have successfully installed ABOP developer edition. Now we will take a snapshot of our virtual machine and then we will continue with post installation steps. Okay, the snapshot is taken. Now we will continue with post installation steps. First, we will be doing our port forwardings on VirtualBox. If you click this picture on the blog, we can just see what we will be doing. So I open VirtualBox, I go to settings, I click settings, network, advanced, and port forwarding. We already have SSI here, so we will just add four of them. One of them is HTTP, and all of them are edited. I will just click OK. Okay, and that's it. Now we need to install subqueue. And subqueue is already available in our archive file. We have two options here. One of them is going to your Windows machine to the downloads folder. And here you can just open the RAR file that we have. But obviously this is a huge file. It will take long. Another option is just going to FileZilla and copying it from the Ubuntu. We have already extract archive contents and I will just go to root folder and I will go here SAP setup folder this is where we copied our RAR files and also where we have extracted them see here we have client and under client you can choose one of them I will be using Windows client and here there is a zip file so what you will do is you will just drag and drop the zip file to the your favorite folder which is here in my case. So I will just get it here. Done. Then just unzip this one, extract the content. I have already extracted it. So I go to the press one, under GUI, go to Windows, Win32. Here is here, setup all. You can run setup all here and you will have sub -GUI. Now you can close FileZilla. After installing, you will have this sub logon shortcut. Just double click it here. And we need to add a new connection here. It will be new item. Click next. Give a name here. Sub Ubuntu, for example. IP address is same, 127.0.0.0.1. Remember, we have done port forwarding. Instance is 00. System ID is MPN. Just click finish. You have sub Ubuntu here. And the username and the password is again available on the blog post. I will show you. Here, if you go to this blog post here, you have actually a nice tutorial here. Just some parts are missing. So you have all the passwords. This master password means code Zen 1 in our case. This is the password what we have given during the setup of SAP. And what we are looking for is this developer and download password. So we will be using this password. I will just copy it here. I will go to subqueue. And here I will just paste as a common next time when I need, I will just copy it from here. So 
copy this two, control C, go to sub Ubuntu. You could write it manually as well. And control V, press enter. That's it. Now you can use sub GUI and SAP. And if you want to see what you have installed, you can go to the system status and you can click the details here. If you go to the installed products version, this is what you have here. Now, actually, we won't be able to do development because the, we didn't do the license installation bit. Just to show you that it won't work. It will open, but it won't be working. I am trying to open SE80. It's taking some time. That's because first time it's compiling and it's running on virtual machine. So I go here to the local objects, press enter. So we are in the temp folder. I will try to create a class here. I'm just giving a random Z something because it won't be doing. It won't let us to create it. So it will be asking access key. And to have this all the permissions, we need to install the license. And to install license, first we need to go to the S license. Here seems like there are two license items. Delete them. Right click, delete license. Okay. And delete license again. Okay. We need to get a new license. Normally, you should be able to get it from here, but this doesn't work. So we'll go to remote hardware key. We'll copy this. Each time it creates a new access hardware key. So once if you use it, then probably you cannot use it again. I didn't try it. So you need to go to this link. As mentioned here, you need to go to first S license code, then go to this link and enter the hardware key this one and there's no comment here if you notice maybe you can recognize it from here and we have installed with sideways and you need to scroll it a bit more you need to choose some greetings and put the hardware key we have just copied from s license click i agree accept generate it will be creating a file and it will start download automatically. So I have downloaded previously, then this is a new one. I will be inserting this one. So I am going to subgui back. I'm going to the digital sign licenses tab, click install. It shows you the open dialog. Now we will need to go to my download folder. This is wherever I have downloaded it. This is the new file. Done. So if I come out this transaction and if I go to SE80 again, this time I will be able to create a class and now I have developed access key. Okay, something is set. Just to show you. Yes, great. I will just activate this empty class. Done. It is active. It is uh, allowed us to create an object after the creating license. So that's it basically. So if you need to summarize what we have done, we have installed 18.10 version of Ubuntu on VirtualBox. We have done it because of the old kernel, because of SAP installation problems with the new kernels. We created a computer with name of VHCAL and PLCI, and the, correct, uh, and the password was eight characters, username code zen, password code zen one. Then we have continued preparing virtual wax with the required software, so we have updated and upgraded. Then we installed required libraries and programs. And we disabled firewall. After that, we have copied or installed RAR files from Windows host to the Linux machine. We unwrapped them on Linux. We changed their permissions to allow all kinds of things with the 777. And then we changed the host name. This is important. Afterwards, we copied the license for Sybase to the same folder with install.sh. 
and then we became root user and then we started installation that's it basically we have done all the steps mentioned here we haven't done any extra steps that is not mentioned on this blog post i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it is useful for you if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching